policybazaar.com patriot gor khali ko choro huma gor ke mero naam ai lagne satru ko मगर सुकाम तमाम इतिहास पल चाहे या पुर्खा लाई सोध जीते कौ संसार लाई वीर 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 गोर्खाली There's one more famous thing about the Gurkhas, that once they take the kukri out of the scabbard, they do not put it back unless they draw blood. This beautiful forest hides one of India's premier training institutions, the 58 Gurkha Training Center. It is here that young boys coming from Nepal and other parts of India are trained to become legendary Gurkhas. With me here, I have Brigadier Mukesh Gurung, Sena Medal, who is the commandant of this training center. It is his responsibility to forge that steel that will one day be worthy of being called Gurkhas. Welcome, sir. Thank you. And uh, sir, I start off by asking you, uh, what is it about, you know, Gurkha soldiers coming from Nepal and Gurkha soldiers from all part of India, because Nepal is a sovereign nation. And uh, how did it all come about, sir? If you can give us a little bit of a background, a little bit of a history uh, to help us understand, help our viewers understand about the soldiers who come from Nepal. Uh, first and foremost, Gaurav, uh, on behalf of the Brigade of Gurkhas. Yes, sir. And on behalf of the team of officers and yes, men sir. that I have here in 58 GTC Shillong. Yes, sir. A very hearty welcome to you. Thank you very much, sir. And the team of Republic TV. Thank you very to much, Shillong. Sir. Thank you very much, sir. Coming to the question of how the legend of the Gurkhas started. Yes, sir. Somewhere around the 10th century, uh, there was a hill dynasty known as the Mallas. So, Nepal became part of that. And gradually towards the 17th century, one of his uh, dynasty uh, personnel by the name of Prithvi Narayan, he started expanding the Nepalese kingdom. And it is because of his endeavors that the Kumau Hills and the Gadwal Hills became part of the erstwhile Nepalese kingdom. Now, this kind of an expansion of the uh, his area inevitably brought him in conflict with the British then, who had already established themselves here in the Absolutely. plains of India. Absolutely. And this ultimately led to the Anglo-Gurkha Wars of the early 1800s. Post this conflict, the British decided that, you know, it would be a great force multiplier to have the Gurkhas with such fighting skills to be part of the army. Wow. And that is how the recruitment of the Gurkhas into the British army started. And uh, till date we have and that legacy continues to the legacy continues post the British Indian Empire having you know uh, moved out from here. There is much history that these young boys will carry. There is much of the past that they will carry. They have responsibilities. You know, viewers, I often say that the Indian Army is not just a powerful army; it's also a moral army. We are not strong because we have weapons. We are strong because we are right. And who a better example to drive home this point than the legendary Sam Bahadur? The Sam Manikshaw Museum has some very interesting stuff. Uniforms, boots, accoutrements, which are directly part of the legend of Sam Bahadur. Come with me. Let's take a look. Look at this helmet here. 
this helmet has got five stars on it. These five stars represent that this is the helmet of a field marshal of the army. These are the boots of Field Marshal Manik Shaw. His cap, the pea cap, the ceremonial belt, and who can forget his famous uniform with all those ribbons and the five stars at the collar, the Field Marshal ranks, the belts here, both the belts, and the Field Marshal's baton with the Ashok's thumb in silver. The Field Marshal rank is a very unique rank. While it is an honorary rank, a person may keep this rank till the time he's living. They say that field marshals never retire. But Sam Manikshaw was a field marshal of field marshals. That field marshals do not retire is one thing. But with Sam Manikshaw, he never went away from our lives. He never will. He will live in the collective memory of an army and of a nation. I'm here at the Veerstal of the 5th and the Earth Corps Rifles. Behind me, carved on black granite, are names of those martyrs who have fought for the Paltan, for this army and for this nation. There are thousands of names and they tell tales, tales of valor and courage and actions beyond the call of duty in places like Mesopotamia, North Africa, Afghanistan, Kargil, Siachen Glacier, Kashmir, you name it and the Gurkhas have shed blood there. Some blood was their own, but most of it was the enemy's. In front of me are these black, somber granite slabs with the names of martyrs written in gold. It's so sad when I touch this wall. They have left this wall blank deliberately. It is unfortunate. We want our braves to come back safely home. But this is the bitter truth of war and counterinsurgency operations. This wall has been left blank for the martyrs to come. That is the price one pays for defending India. And there are pillars and there are pillars and there are black granite pillars. All names written in gold. I really wish someday Indians would come here and see the freedom that we enjoy, the freedom that we take for granted, the happiness that we have with our families. It is protected by martyrs who shed blood. Even today as I speak, even today as I speak these lines to you, there is some soldier along the line of control who's probably breathing his last. It is sad, it is unfortunate, but that is the price one pays for freedom. I am joined here by Major Govind Joshi. Good morning, Jain, Major Joshi. Jain, sir. Jain, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, sir. So, Major Govind Joshi here is from the famous and iconic Five Gurkha Rifles, some of whose martyrs we saw their names etched on those black granite walls. We have seen legends here, we have seen martyrs here, but there is one legend I want to speak about that India should know about. Perhaps the largest and perhaps the biggest legend of the Gurkha Rifles. Major Govind, I want to ask you about one particular case which, uh, you know, I think which the people of India must know. And uh, because they know about Sam Manekshaw, they know about other famous military personalities. But tell us, what is the legend of Gajay Gale? So during the Second World War, the second 5GR, it was assigned uh, a task there in the Burma and Chin Hills. So he was leading a platoon, a platoon of young soldiers, not very experienced soldier and he's the only NCO who's leading them by front. Okay. And a lot many soldiers were killed. The main task was to stop the advancing Japanese. So here, Gajigale advances with his kukri in his hand and the war cry, Ayo Gurkhali. And because of this sheer motivation and the leadership is leading from the front and the Kanchas, the juniors are at the back and thinking, yes, the Guruji is ahead. So they are just following him. Meanwhile, he gets a splinter shot, a grenade shot. He is wounded in his arm, in his chest, in the leg, but he's continuing with his charge. Okay. So, with this condition also, he was told to go to the regimental aid post, okay. to RAP, yes. but he refused. Yes. He said, no. Firstly, I will go, I will complete my task. So here, 
Meanwhile, again he tried to uh, kill a soldier, the enemy soldier behind a cannon, with his kukri, and got eight bullets. Finally, he was ordered by his company commander. Then only he went to RAP. So first, you're saying that he refused to be evacuated. Yes. Because he was given a task. Yes. And when the company commander said that no, I'm giving you orders, orders. you're ordered specifically. That is the time when he fell back. Yes. In spite of being shot eight times. Yes. Plus that grenade splinter. Exactly. The only reason is that the only thing which is still in his mind is Nam Namak and Nishan. Nam yes. of his battalion. Yes. Namak, of course, is eating of the banner and the Nishan of the banner he's carrying. Imagine a Gurkha NCO, a young NCO with still younger soldiers, most of them greenhorns, charging in the face of the enemy. Charging sometimes to sheer death. But Gajagale survived. He survived to tell the story. And for his act beyond the call of duty, the near miracle that he performed, he was awarded the highest honor that the British Empire could give. He was honored with the Victoria Cross. Yes. टीम भर्ती भर आया मैं खुशी और बहुत गर्व महसूस भैर लगभग म यहाँ अट्ठाइस साल नौकरी करें अट्ठाइस साल से म रेजिमेंट को सेवा कर कोशिश दिन को बाद में रिटायर होना गई रहे तेस कारण आज म तिमें आज ये खुकुरी दिन गई रहे और मैं आशा छिमी ये गोर्खा सैन गोर्खा बटलाइन में नौकरी करें तिमें यह खुकुरी को शान और मान लरकर रख गुड लक गड ब्लेस यू दिस वॉज एन इंट्रैक्शन बिट्वीन फादर एंड सन द फादर Subedar Gurung has served his regiment and the country for 28 long years and his son young Himal a young recruit who's yet to start his career with the army and this is what the father tells the son I have completed 28 years of honorable service and after 28 years I'm going to retire in a few months I give you this kukri this kukri is not just to cut the enemy down this kukri is not just for duty this kukri is actually a symbol of gurkha pride and then the father tells the son that i have high expectations from you and i wish that you would always uphold the name and the honor of the regiment and the indian army 95 new recruits have been selected from nepal to join the elite gurkha rifles They have come here, here in Shillong at 58 Gurkha Training Center, to receive training. Amongst these new recruits, who knows what the future holds for them? Who knows from within these recruits, you might get the next Gajegale or the next Lakshman Gurung. Over a period of one year, they will be honed into fine weapons of war. Inhi me se kuch aise recruit honge jo aage jaake desh ka aur regiment ka naam. और उसकी इज्जत की रखवाली करेंगे दे से द ड्रिल इज द बेड रॉक ऑफ मिलिट्री डिसिप्लिन इट इज ऑन दिस परेड ग्राउंड दैट यंग गुरखा रेक्रूट आर टॉट द बेसिक्स ऑफ मिलिट्री डिसिप्लिन एंड इट इज दीज इंस्ट्रक्टर्स हेयर who instill that iron in their soul they say that a soldier is not a soldier unless he has discipline and it is this parade ground this very parade ground that those young men are made into the world's finest gurkha soldiers seen how the gurkhas fight with the kukri and i'm sure you found them fearsome now let us see how the gurkhas dance with the kukri <laughs> sarkar le kaha the jab ki vishwa ka kisi bhi sena se ladaunga lekin gurkha sena se nahi ladaunga bola tha iska yahi nishan hai They say that Gurkhas are born fighters. They also say that Gurkhas are born sportsmen. The 
जिसे हम ट्रेनिंग में इनको एक इवेंट अभी जैसे कि बैटल फिजिकल एफिशिएंसी टेस्ट हमने आपने देखा फाइव किलोमीटर रन करके आए तो मतलब इतना डिस्टेंस रनिंग करने के बाद आने के बाद भी वो नेक्स्ट इवेंट को करने के उसके पास में वो क्षमता है कि नहीं है उसी तरह से आने के बाद में इसको वर्टिकल रोप क्लाइंब कराते हैं ये ट्रेनिंग का एक हिस्सा है इसमें ये प्रैक्टिस कराने से आगे जब लड़ाई के दौरान पे उसको किसी और नेचुरल जो ऑब्स्टिकल आते हैं उसको पार करने में आसानी होता है वी आर हियर एट द बैटल ऑब्स्टिकल कोर्स बिफोर दिस दीज यंग रिक्रूट्स हैव कंप्लीटेड सक्सेसफुली अ बीपीईटी टेस्ट इन विच ऑल 106 रनिंग केम इन एक्सेलेंट the fitness standards are indeed high now they are going to start and run the battle obstacle course the battle obstacle course comprises of 27 obstacles all laid out on undulating and uneven ground what does this prove what is it meant to show and what does it test this shows that the infantry is unstoppable you cannot stop the infantry whatever obstacles come in the way the infantry will just tide over them and reach the objective let us find out if these boys are now ready or not gurkali macha hoy ke hoy na here we have this jungle uh, lane uh, shooting range wherein we train recruits to move in jungle and in case they encounter any terrorist how to engage it how to eliminate it After which we took you to the battle obstacle course, in which we said that the infantry is unstoppable. There is no obstacle that can actually stop the infantry. It just keeps on going till it achieves its objective. We are now here to show you that the infantry can not only cross obstacles; it can cross mountains. It can come down from mountains. It can climb up mountains. There is nothing stopping the Gurkha soldier. Slide. What we have here is a young soldier doing the slide. This is a typical way of crossing a big divide like this. So this is how the soldier comes using a rope between the two two firm features like two trees and he's crossed over here. With me, I have here young soldier Vikas Subba from Darjeeling. His name is Vikas Subba but you will realize after a few minutes why I choose to call him Spider-Man. Let's talk to this young soldier. and find out where he has learned this unique craft of climbing sheer faces of mountains to pehle aapne aise shuru kara tha ki pehle artificial se shuru kara tha maine sab ko artificial se kiya artificial se shuru kara tha aur ab ja ke aap natural pe aa gaye hain hai na to aap hame kya karke dikhayenge aap seedha chadh ke dikhayenge bina kisi sare ke apne haath se haath aur pair ka istemal karke sirf ye safety harness lagaye iske alawa kuch nahi hai aur aap pura ye chadh ke dikhayenge sheer face he is going to climb the sheer face and show us how this mountain side can be climbed this 90 degree climb can be done without using of any machines or any equipment there is just one safety harness and this man his strength his guts and his skill i am inside this trench and with me is colonel hudram of the gurkha rifles 6 inches above our heads they are firing light machine guns 5.56 mm ammunition uh, i don't know if you can see the tracer bullets just flying 6 inches above our heads and very soon you'll see soldiers and recruits of the gurkha rifles coming and crawling here is the first recruit who's coming here he's crawling this this exercise is done by the army everywhere to give you an indication of how it would feel to be in a battle situation with live ammunition so what is being fired are not blanks these are live rounds and they are going 6 inches above our heads shabash beta shabash i'm doing this after 18 years it's a little strange but memories are coming back slowly we've seen a lot of battle inoculations in the past during my time with the army i hope you can hear the explosions that are happening 6 inches above our heads This is live ammunition being fired. Some of them have kukris clenched to their teeth because when they reach the objective 
and when the combat gets close and dirty, when it's hand-to-hand -hand combat, then the Gurkhas are famous for slaying the enemy with their kukris. Barrel, bacha ke beta. I can see ricochets. There are uh, there are tracer bullets which have hit some rocks and they're ricocheting all over the forest. They're crawling one by one through this, uh, which is muddy in some places, half filled with water. There goes a mini flare up to light up the sky. They're firing so close. They're firing so close and the mini flares are landing so close to us that I can almost smell the cordite. I can smell gunpowder. Colonel, how was, how was your experience the first time you did battle inoculation? How was your experience? Well, uh, when I was on the battle inoculation for the first time, that was in the officer's training academy. It was like, you know, a different experience in that we had been trained hard and we had been uh, doing the firing ourselves. And uh, towards the end of the training, I would say that's the culmination of the training in which uh, we are put under the uh, effects of actual fire, just to give you an effect as to how it feels to be uh, under uh, actual fire. So it was scary initially, and uh, after that, once the uh, blast went off, and after that, once we started running and then getting, uh, getting inside the trenches, and started crawling, and uh, we uh, feel that the uh, bullets are just going right overhead. At the time that we started feeling that okay, one mistake and uh, that's uh, that's it, your life. Yeah, that's the end of it. Huh? That's, a, that's the end of it. Yeah. And uh, so it was like okay, this is the uh, life in the army is not uh, simple, and uh, one mistake is all that it takes. Yeah, you're very right, very right. I, I second that. Life in the army is not so simple. One mistake. Now, if I just decide to get up and uh, sort of scratch my back a little. Uh, there's going to be a hole in this helmet, probably. So I don't think I should get up. Yeah, there's one more guy coming. I remember, you know, my time during the OTA, when we underwent battle inoculation. Same, the night thing on the firing range and then you're crawling and they're firing above your head. I, at that time, felt it was very disorienting because uh, there was total disorientation. And somehow, I don't know the way I crawled, I could not figure out from where they were firing. But I knew that they were firing above my head. So I kept my head down and I kept on crawling, I kept on crawling, till I reached the end. Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah. You uh, always have that, uh, somewhere the fear is always there. Yes. It is, actually, when people say that army in the, uh, people in the army are brave, it is not that we don't feel fear. We, we feel fear. But then, we are trained to overcome that fear. Like, this is what we are putting them through. Yes. That this fear, they are being trained to overcome that fear. That the bullets are flying, or flying over your heads. And still you can go underneath it and then do your job. So that is what we are trying to put them through. Absolutely. You confront your fears in the army. And you confront them by sitting down in a ditch when somebody is firing bullets six inches over your head. policybazaar.com patriot